Hi again, this is Andy, K4GKP, and welcome back to the Ham Whisper and Lesson 34 in the Technician Operator Element 2 exam course. In this lesson, we covered the T0B questions and antenna installation. The T0B section of questions deal with tower safety and overhead power lines. Now, this is the second of three sections on the exam, which the FCC is trying to make sure that you've done the necessary research to avoid killing yourself or others with amateur radio. Now, there are a couple themes in this section, um, of which are how not to fall off a tower, that having your antenna come close to power lines is bad, and if lightning strikes your antenna, how not to damage your equipment or set your house on fire. So with that said, let's get started with the questions. When should members of a tower work team wear a hard hat and safety glasses? All right, the answer is pretty simple. It's at all times when any work is being done on the tower. So just remember always wear your safety gear and you'll get this question correct. What is a good precaution to observe before climbing an antenna tower? All right, what you need to do is put on a climbing harness and safety glasses. Now, the biggest risk with towers is falling off. So this will help sort out some of the other answers. So if you remember that the biggest risk when you're up high in the air is falling to the ground, putting on a climbing harness and wearing safety glasses it makes sense, except for the safety glasses part, but that's to avoid poking your eye out from a, a piece of the antenna. So safety glasses, climbing harness. Under what circumstances is it safe to climb a tower without a helper or observer? Now, if you can remember that these type of things, safety deals with absolutes, the answer is never. So never climb a tower without a helper or observer. Which of the following is an important safety precaution to observe when putting up an antenna tower? Or what you want to do is you want to look for and stay clear of any overhead electrical wires. And that's the answer on the exam. The reason for that, if you don't and you're not too careful, you end up hitting a power, an electric wire and you're going to end up electrocuting yourself. So just like you were flying a kite, look out for power lines. Also, some of the possible answers on the exam include a wrist grounding strap, and that answer is always incorrect for the question that's asking. So just stick to the power line theme, you should be fine. What is the purpose of a gin pole? All right, a gin pole is used to lift tower sections or antennas, and that's the answer you're looking for in the exam, to lift tower sections or antennas. Now you need to think of a gin pole, gin pole as a type of little mini crane. And once you get a section of your antenna tower set up, it's essentially a pulley system on a stick. You clamp the gin pole to the top of that section and you use it to hoist up the next section. And you keep on stacking them like that until you're done. So to lift tower sections or antennas is the purpose of a gin pole. What is the minimum safe distance from a power line to allow when installing an antenna? All right, you need to allow it so that if the antenna falls unexpectedly, no part of it can come closer than 10 feet to the power lines. So in case the, your antenna tower falls or your, your dipole snaps, you don't want it to hit the power line, and you want a, a reasonably safe distance to do that in 10 feet is that answer. So it's a pretty simple question. Just remember 10 feet, and it should be good. Which of the following is an important safety rule to remember when using a crank-up tower? All right, the answer is this type of tower must never be climbed unless it is in the fully retracted position. Now, retractable towers are convenient, but they are not the sturdiest structures in the world. And if you try to climb one when it's fully extended, the, your weight could cause it to retract on its own. And even though sliding down a tower may be sound fun, it's, it, it's really not. So never climb a retractable tower unless it is fully retracted. What is considered to be a proper grounding method for a tower? All right, the answer you're looking for is separate eight foot long ground rods for each tower leg bonded to the tower and to each other. So if you have a three legged tower, you're going to want to drive in three eight foot ground stakes into the ground next to each leg. And then you want to bond the leg of the tower to its respective ground rod and then bond all three ground rods together. So you have this triangle of grounding. So if you have four legs, use four rods, you know, five legs, whatever. But just remember that and you should be fine. Why should you avoid attaching an antenna to a utility pole? Well, the reason is the antenna could contact high voltage power wires. And if, this is the power line theme here. And when they say utility pole, they just don't mean um, a standalone telephone pole that has nothing attached to it. They're talking about something that's supplying cable or power or something like that. So keep antennas and towers away from power lines. And you don't want to contact high voltage wires. That's the theme. Which of the following is true concerning grounding conductors used for lightning protection? You should avoid sharp bends. So the answer on the exam is sharp bends must be avoided. 
You want to keep the line as straight as possible, straight to the ground, so the lightning has the path of least resistance. So sharp bends must be avoided when grounding conductors are used for lightning protection. Which of the following establishes grounding requirements for an amateur radio tower or antenna? All right, the answer is the local electrical codes. And I know, where can I find my lo local electrical code? I found one once through the fire department. And some, so sometimes the fire departments have these. And the best way really to find it is to ask other amateurs in your area what resource they're using, and they should be able to direct you in the right place. So local electrical codes establish grounding requirements for amateur radio towers or antennas. Which of the following is good practice when installing ground wires on a tower for lightning protection? The answer is to ensure that connections are short and direct. So when you are installing your grounds to a tower for lightning protection, you want to have the most direct and shortest route to the ground. You want to avoid sharp bends, you want to avoid loops or wrapping around anything like that. You want a straight line straight to the ground. So for this question of the possible answers, a good practice when installing ground wires on a tower for lightning protection is to ensure that the connections are short and direct. And that concludes the T0B review, and now it's time for the T0B quiz. So take out a pencil and paper, number 1 through 12. I'll go through the questions quickly, so pause the video if you need more time. And when you're done, stop by hamwhisper.com, go to the exam answers page, and click on the T0B link to check your answers. And now we've got that all that covered, let's start with the quiz. Question one. When should members of a tower work team wear a hard hat and safety glasses? A, at all times except when climbing the tower. B, at all times except when belted firmly to the tower. C, at all times when any work is being done on the tower. Or D, only when the tower exceeds 30 feet in height. Question two. What is a good precaution to observe before climbing an antenna tower? A. Make sure that you wear a grounded wrist strap. B. Remove all tower grounded connections. C. Put on a climbing harness and safety glasses. Or D. All these choices are correct. Question 3. Under what circumstances is it safe to climb a tower without a helper or observer? A. When no electrical work is being performed. B. When no mechanical work is being performed. C. When the work being done is not more than 20 feet above ground. Or D. Never. Question four. Which of the following is an important safety precaution to observe when putting up an antenna tower? A. Wear a ground strap connected to your wrist at all times. B. Insulate the base of the tower to avoid lightning strikes. C. Look for and stay clear of any overhead electrical wires. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question five. What is the purpose of a gin pole? A. To temporarily replace guy wires. B. To be used in place of a safety harness. C, to lift tower sections or antennas, or D, to provide temporary ground. Question six, what is the minimum safe distance from a power line to allow when installing an antenna? A, half the width of your property. B, the height of the power line above ground. C, one half wavelength at the operating frequency, or D, so that if the antenna falls unexpectedly, no part of it can come closer than 10 feet to the power wires. Question seven, which of the following is an important safety rule to remember when using a crank up tower? A. This type of tower must never be painted. B. This type of tower must never be grounded. C. This type of tower must never be climbed unless it is in the fully retracted position. Or D. All these choices are correct. Question 8. What is considered to be a proper grounding method for a tower? A. A single 4 foot ground rod driven into the ground no more than 12 inches from the base. B. A ferrite core RF choke connected between the tower and the ground. C. Separate 8 foot long ground rods for each tower leg bonded to the tower and each other. Or D. A connection between the tower base and a cold water pipe. Question 9. Why should you avoid attaching an antenna to a utility pole? A. The antenna will not work properly because of induced voltages. B. The utility company will charge you an extra monthly fee. C. The antenna could contact high voltage power wires. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 10. Which of the following is true concerning grounded conductors used for lightning protection? A. Only non-insulated wire must be used. B. Wires must be carefully routed with precise right angle bends. C. Sharp bends must be avoided. Or D. Common grounds must be avoided. And question 11. 
Which of the following establishes grounding requirements for an amateur radio tower or antenna? A. FCC Part 97 rules. B. Local electrical codes. C. FAA tower lightning regulations. Or D. Underwriters Laboratories recommended practices. And question 12. Which of the following is good practice when installing ground wires on a tower for lightning protection? A. Put a loop in the ground connection to prevent water damage to the ground system. B. Make sure that all bends in the ground wires are clean right angle bends. C. Ensure that connections are short and direct. Or D. All of these choices are correct. And that's it for the T0B section in Lesson 34. Now that you're done with the quiz, stop by hamwhisper.com, check your answers. And we have one lesson left, and that's Lesson 35. And until Lesson 35, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73s, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.